Hi, I'm Larry Nespoli with the New Jersey Council of County Colleges. At New Jersey's community colleges, we believe that our students, as well as all citizens, need to be informed about the important issues facing higher education. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Teen driving, a matter of life and death. Next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by New Jersey Council of County Colleges, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, the heart of academic medicine, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Cone Resnick, Accounting Tax and Advisory, where forward thinking creates results, the Russell Berry Foundation, and by Steve and Elaine Pozicki. Promotional support provided by NJ.com. Small news, big news, true Jersey. And by Commerce Magazine. Welcome to Caucus New Jersey. I'm Steve Adubato. And every 10 minutes, a teen crashes in New Jersey. Teen crashes are often the result of drinking, distraction, and speeding. Here in the studio to discuss teen driver safety, we have our good friend Pan Fisher, who is leader of the New Jersey Teen Safe Driving Coalition. Nolan Reinecke is a Manalapan High School senior, part of a great program called Save a Brave. We'll find out a little bit about that later on. Eric Stenson is the, the Corporate Communications Administrator at NJM Insurance Group. And finally, Wendy Burke is a public education coordinator at the Brain Injury Alliance of New Jersey. Throughout this program, you're gonna see uh, websites, uh, important websites with great information about teen driver safety. Uh, first of all, you've been with us before many times, Pam. Mm -hmm. Let's put this in perspective. How bad a problem are we talking about with teen drivers? It's the number one cause of death an injury for teens in New Jersey and nationwide. Um, it's happening every day. You said every 10 minutes we see a teen crash. The good news is many of the crashes are single vehicle mm -hmm. property damage, but that alone, you know, it's, it's scary. Uh, we see about, you know, anywhere from 25 to 40 teens a year in our state die, and they may be the teen driver or a passenger driven by a teen. And imagine that parent standing there having that knock on the door saying, your teen's not coming home tonight. I have a 19-year-old. So I'm living and breathing this, but it's really, really a huge problem. And I think the key to understand here is that we're not saying teens are bad drivers. Mm -hmm. Teens are inexperienced and teens are developing their brains. And so they don't look at risk the same way the rest of us do. So for parents, we really have a huge role to play here. We need to help them get over the inexperience hurdle, which takes time. And we need to understand that how these, these kids look at risk is very different. So we have to be constantly coaching, mentoring, setting clear rules to get them through this dangerous time. Let's talk about how um, NJAM got involved in this. Well, we were approached a couple of years ago by the uh, Brain Injury Alliance when they were first getting the Champion Schools You Got Brains program started. By the way, it's You Got Brains program, which is the program uh, that Manalapan won. You won that contest with the video we're about to show you in just a few minutes yes um called save a brave which is save a, a brave competed in that program and we got first place yes we'll talk about that in a second boy you got that first place in there very quickly <laughs> uh, so njm got involved when they heard about it yes well we were approached we've always been a big safety oriented organization and one of the things that impressed us the most about the champion schools program was it all surrounds teaching young drivers good habits and the peer-to-peer -peer aspect was so unique. You hear young well, what people. What do you mean? Young people are learning lessons from their own contemporaries. It just presents a different opportunity than if a teacher is talking to them or a police officer, because they're hearing it from people who experience the same things they do. As opposed to middle-aged men or women coming in saying, "Here are the five things you need to do to stay safe in a car." Stay safe in a car. That's not it. Oh, that's exactly the, the whole idea. Are they is, more effective than we are? There's always a role for parents. Kids learn by example. But there's something that they hear from their peers that has a certain effect that's different from what they could hear from parents or other authority figures. Jump in. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I mean, Save a Brave, which is what I'm a part of at Manalapan. And that's Manalapan Braves. That is the mascot. Braves is our mascot, yeah. and we're saving our mascot. We're saving our fellow students. It's just the fact that we're all going through the same thing. You pull up to the senior parking lot every morning, and everyone really 
is at danger. Everyone is commuting to school every day. And just, we're all going through the same thing. So to hear from a parent who we've driven in a car with for six months to a year with our permit, it's a little bit refreshing to hear like someone going through a similar thing and to know that, you know what, the, it can't happen to me-ism really isn't real. I mean, we could be good drivers, yet we're inexperienced. And just to hear it from each other definitely is a very big wake up call since we definitely are all going through the same aspects of driving. What does Save a Brave do before we see this video? What does it actually do? What's it Save a Brave, do? what we do is we get elected. It's an all seniors program and it pretty much just spreads awareness about teen driving because like I said, every morning we all get in the car, we're all drowsy and we're all going through the same thing. So we're almost, everyone's at danger in the senior parking lot. So Save a Brave pretty much just spreads awareness and says, hey, you know what guys, we need to watch out. We let people know pretty much the dangers of teen driving and of everything just to do is driving. So, so let's go through this because we're also gonna talk about the brain injury piece of this, which is huge. Some of the biggest reasons for teen accidents, teen driving accidents. Distracted because of texting? Yeah, it's not just Sometimes, texting. Right? See, I always think it's texting. texting. No, it's not just texting. It's a combination of things. Understand that the teen brain is kind of going all over the place. So they're focused on a million different things. Right. Driving a car takes complete focus, and they can't necessarily do that. Hold on. Our, our sons are 10 and 12. Can we just ban them from driving? No, because, well, first of all, they can't drive at 10 to 12, so. <laughs> no, I didn't mean, you know I didn't mean that. Right? I know. So the point is they're going to. They're going to drive. Yes. I mean, they're going to drive, we know that. But we've got to help them kind of come into this, but also understand that they have to stay 100% focused on okay. what they're doing. Eliminate the distractions caused by technology, right. by passengers, which are a huge problem. How many, got them in the, how many in the car? You're only supposed to have one by law in New Jersey, but that one increases the risk by another 50%. Teens are already just high risk. Just having another teen in your car yeah. definitely is a big distraction because even if someone just by talking to you, you know I mean, if you're focusing on the conversation, you could be missing what's on the road. And That's the right. car is not a kitchen. The car is not a place for social media. The car isn't like a DJ. Eating studio. this, that. Yeah. yeah it's just you ever seen people put, people put on makeup? No? Sure. That's, you see that's everything. We're doing right, we'll come back to it again. Uh, I, I want to come back to some of the distractions in a minute before we see the video. Your organization, the Brain yeah. Injury Alliance, what's the connection here again? So uh, the Brain Injury Alliance of New Jersey, we were actually doing a lot of programs focused on teens because the highest incidence of brain injury occurs between the ages of 15 and 19. Is so that right? That is correct. And so we needed to, we recognized that there was an issue that we needed to address. And similar to what you said, it was a bunch of middle-aged people sitting around a table trying to come up with messages that would resonate with teens. And we quickly realized that if teens were part of the problem, they needed to be part of the solution. And so what's, what's You Got Brains? So You Got Brains is a campaign that actually was developed by teens. We went out across the state. They didn't actually develop it. Well, we Did went they out. Really? Well, let me speak. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, okay. You want the chair? <laughs> if anyone ever we, told you how assertive you are, I like that. Go ahead. So, okay, so you got brains. Out, I apologize. So we went out um, and met with focus groups across the state, and we tried to get messages that would resonate with teens. And so teens actually developed the slogan, You Got Brains, getting teens to think about their brain and making good decisions. So absolutely, our campaign was developed by teens across the state. They also then helped to direct our messages, but then we weren't quite doing enough. We had them sort of, we used their guidance to develop mm -hmm. our website and our goals, but we were still developing the content, and we realized we needed teens to really take control of this, mm -hmm. which is when five years ago we started our You Got Brains Champion Schools program. Working champion Schools. Champion Schools program. We're asking schools across New Jersey to become a champion for teen safe driving, working with an advisor and students within their school to develop a teen safe driving campaign. Did these guys win? These guys Manalpa. did an amazing job and won last year, 2013-14. Uh, they were one of our grand prize winners. Make sure to slip that in there, like you said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see, now that you're ready to, now that you've taken over, Thank you. now that you <laughs> want to plug your program, why don't you do this? Why don't you tell everyone what we're about to see? We're about to see actually last year's program, um, Save a Brave, they actually made a video and it's kind of a fun little twist on safe driving. So the popular song, it was called uh, Blurred Lines last year. We made Brave Lines. Yeah, I know. I'm not that old that I don't know Blurred Lines, okay? <laughs> you know what? Maybe some people out there. Yeah, we know it. Robin Thicke. So yeah, Robin Thicke, Thicke Blurred yeah. Lines, so we made Brave Lines. He had an lines. issue with the wife, I know. But yeah. that's a different show. Go ahead. <laughs> different show. Maybe E. So this is... <laughs> This video really does, in a fun way, kind of, it tells the, definitely the cautions we have to take while safe driving, and it's a little bit funny at times, but it definitely should be taken seriously because 
it is very dangerous. And might I just add something to this, that um, the Manalapin um, Save a Brave campaign last year actually worked with um, a survivor of a oh, really? teen crash. And he actually helped them musically with doing the um, recording and mm -hmm. actually helping them along the way with uh, developing some of the lyrics. And so he sort of coached them. And they had actually met this individual who had come um, as an inspirational speaker to our showcase. He had then come to the school and really has befriended the students. And it's really been a phenomenal that connection that you don't know the back end of that story um, from seeing the video. Yeah. Um, who she's referring to is Gabe Hurley is his name, and he actually was Gabe Hurley. Gabe Hurley, yeah, cool name. It's he great, was, man. yeah, he was actually affected by an innocent. He was innocent in the accident. Someone crashed into him, and his life pretty much changed. He's now blind, but he was really the incentive for most of us to join because he pretty much showed us that this guy, he was, he had a great job, he was engaged, everything really he had going for him, and his life just took a 180, and he definitely is an inspiration because he makes the most out of every day now. He still plays guitar, but just any innocent person, sure. it doesn't have to be you driving, you could be just on the road and on someone else side. can hurt you. And Gabe was a part of this. Absolutely. Can I go to it now? Yes. Because I've lost control of the show. <laughs> uh, Bob Morris, our great director, or I think he's still directing, or maybe one of your colleagues have taken over in there, too. Bob, let's go to the video. Because you were texting, don't fix your lashes, or you'll see flashes in the real view. Can't let it get past me, this stuff's so nasty. Talk about distraction, need these brave lines. Just stop the texting. Stop the tweeting, better not be eating, drive more safely. This could have been gravely, take better actions, no more distractions. That's good stuff. Yeah, it's great. It's great because it is teens talking to teens and, and it's them. And that's the key. We really need folks to understand that teens are, they own the problem, they can mm. help solve the problem, they really can make it happen. So congratulations to you guys, oh, I, thank you. great work. Your reaction to it? Well, it's very clear the message resonates um, and it's done in a lighthearted way, it employs humor, music, and a lot of these are more than just the videos too. I mean, they're yeah. really well thought out programs and they also have a, they operate across a bunch of different media. There were t-shirts mm -hmm. and some of the other ones had outreach. They would worked with the Department of Transportation to get signs posted. Mm -hmm. It take, takes a lot of leadership, collaboration, creativity, and talk to folks, talk to our audience in public broadcasting and FIOS um, about what happens to the winner. What does NJM do then? NJM awards a driving simulator. Describe what that is for people who don't know. Basically, what they are is they're kind of designed to look like a small car, like a cab. And they simulate the driving experience. You can, the machines are really pretty amazing. They've got a number of different modes. There's a distracted mode where the machine will actually text a kid's phone mm. and they can kind of experience what it's like to try to respond to that. There's an impaired driving mode. So you get an idea of what it's like to drive after a few drinks. What's the goal? The goal is to get them to practice in a safe situation so they'll have the knowledge that when they're actually on the road to be making better decisions and building better habits. Uh, keep looking at the websites that we, have, uh, that we have up throughout this segment because each one of those organizations, each one of those sites is involved in this effort to protect our teens, our kids, your kids, um, from the dangers of being out there because they have more challenges. They are distracted in a whole variety of ways. Follow up, get that information. I wanna follow up with you. Um, the response from some of your, most of your fellow students to this campaign, to what degree do you find them saying, hey, yeah, this makes sense to me. Um, I'm not getting in that car. Um, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm gonna focus on what I'm doing. And to what degree do you find kids ignoring it? I definitely do think the majority of the kids, believe it or not, have taken great effect from Save a Brave. That's why it kept coming back. Just the fact that you see your fellow students and you see someone like Gabe Hurley come in, you realize that it is real and that, you know what, what's the point of answering a text when your life is at stake? So I think a lot of students really did get that message across. There is some students that have, unfortunately, you see in the parking lot, they clearly don't get the message straight across. But regardless, even if we get to majority of the people, we need to keep the roads as safe as possible. You know, the other part of this um, is that adults can talk about this all we want. But in the end, 
how we act. Mm -hmm. I, I always wonder if I, whether I should say something on the air. Okay, it's too late. So um, I got a text the other day while I was driving, right. and our, our daughter, your very young daughter, Olivia's in the back seat, and so I was at a stop sign, and I looked at the text, and I started to respond, and our daughter Olivia said, Daddy, pay attention. Mm -hmm. Good for her. And I said, what? Great. And she didn't say stop texting because yeah. it's against the rules. She just said, pay attention. And it's just, you know, and I just, you know, I put the phone down, and I thought to myself, you can talk about this all you want. That's right. You can tell kids what they're supposed to do. But they're watching us, aren't they? Oh, yeah. That's right. And, um, I'll come back of, to you, Pam. Yeah. Part of our program focuses a lot on parents um, being good role models. And so we encourage the students in the school to actually take their messages back to their parents and get them engaged and have that dialogue and develop uh, parent-teen contracts and invite them to a share the keys presentations where the parents and teens are hearing the same message. Because as we say all along when we're educating parents, that that child is watching you since they turn around in their car seat at the age of two or three. Right. And so everything that we do, they're learning. And so if they see their parent driving fast, aggressively, distracted, texting and driving, driving while impaired, and being okay with it, the message that we're sending is that it's okay to do these things, but yet it's not okay. And it and only takes that one time. It absolutely takes that one time. And as Pam started um, the segment earlier, the teens don't have the experience that we do. And so even if we did right. something that put us at risk and we were okay and we were lucky that it didn't cause a crash, we're not so sure that that's going to be the same outcome for the teens. And so we are really engaging parents and trying to get the message to them that it is up to them to play a role in keeping their new drivers safe, not only with being good role models, but there's other steps Jump as well. I agree, and I, I can't overstate the role model issue. It does start the minute you bring your child home from the hospital. They're watching everything you do. We absorb that as children. We're sponges. There's no doubt about it. Parents have a critical role. They have to get educated about this issue. And please, when I have parents who say this to me very candidly, you know, I crashed. What's the big deal? We're survive. It's just part of growing up. It's not. It doesn't they don't really have say to be. That. They do. I've had many parents say that to me. But most parents are concerned. They're, they really want to do the right thing, but they've got to get educated. Share the keys. Wendy mentioned the program. It's a free program that will that will bring into any high school, any community setting. You can reach out to our coalition. You can reach out to the Brain Injury Alliance. Put up the websites as. It's Pam's talking right now. a great ahead. program. It's only 75 minutes. We're asking parents what and teens. What do you teens. do? We basically talk to them about the risk, what's involved. We talk about the graduated driver's license yeah, program. Yeah, what is the graduated driver's license program? As a reminder to your viewers, three-stage process to gradually bring teens into the driving, you know, the licensing world, if you will. Permit phase where they practice lots, lots of practice. Probationary phase where they drive. They're actually licensed, but they have limitations that address the risks. And then full licensure. It works. It has cut our fatalities in half. Mm. But it's first and foremost a parent program, and parents have to be the folks who are saying, these are the rules, these are the standards, this is what I really need you to focus on because I want you to be safe. That's the key. Stay on the issue of parents. Um, talk to us, Eric, about the role of an insurance company, yours in particular, in advising, educating, and talking directly to parents about how we communicate with our kids and frankly how we act. Well, one of the things we do is when you're a parent and you add a young driver to your policy, the parent and the young driver get a letter and they get informational material about driving safety sent from NJM and targeted to them. It's come automatically, yes, all, it's, that kid gets on the policy, NJM sends it out. Absolutely. And What does it say? Basically, a lot of them, there's GDL aspects. That's the graduated driver's license? Yes. Correct. Good. And basically, the, the message to parents really resonates. Like we were saying before, I mean, you're an example. You need to be an example. Because you're right, from an early age, your kids are sitting back there and they're watching everything you do. You know, we have a friend who, and obviously a lot of people out there have friends and family, has happened to many people, um, lost uh, um, a child speeding was involved, um, somebody else was driving. And, and that parent has been so engaged and involved mm -hmm. in 
advocating and talking to others because, mm -hmm. and I've often asked her, you know, you know, why do you do that? And she's obsessed with the idea that it happened to their daughter and they want to make sure it doesn't happen to anyone else. That's a really powerful thing. First of all, that it would even, that someone would even care that much about other people's kids and would take their pain and suffering mm -hmm. and do that. And I've always been moved and motivated and inspired by that. But sometimes does it take that? Sometimes it does. it take yeah. hearing that kind of story? I mean, personally, I lost a family member due to a drunk driving accident. My cousin actually was in a taxi and she was hit by a drunk driver and just knowing... She was just in a taxi, yeah. minding her business. Yes, and just seeing that definitely impacted me to just join Save It Brave and realize that it is real because you could be so innocent and involved in Unfortunately, a lot of people have a wake-up call when they see someone around them or they see that it is real. And it shouldn't have to be that way, which is why we should be proactive. But a lot of the times, that is what it has come down to. Do you get any pushback from any of your students, any of the colleagues around you who say, come on, give me a break. We know what we're doing. Absolutely. I think that not even just getting in a car definitely every day, like I think my friend Viviana said, there's definitely pressures where they say, oh, I know what I'm doing. Oh, I'm a good driver. What, you don't trust me? It's not about that. It's that slim chance that it can happen. Mm -hmm. Why would you, you take the back? risk? Yes, I push back, absolutely. How much? I push back often, honestly. I don't think that my parent or I wouldn't like feeling uncomfortable in a car. Sure? I say either, honestly, stop what you're doing or my mom will pick me up from where I am. Will you say that? Yes. Will you literally say, I'm not getting in the car my mom will pick me up. The problem is, is that a lot of times going into the car, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. It's while driving, like someone could look down and text. You know what I mean? Because while someone's in your driveway and in park, they could be texting and you're like, oh, wow. no big deal. You don't know what you're getting yourself into every time you get into a car, which is a scary thought. So all of a sudden, it seems like a safe situation. The kid you're driving with starts texting and you're sitting right there. And then what do you do? You have, to, I mean, in my situation, it's worth it to feel uncomfortable for the moment and say, hey, can you please put down your phone than to have to be in an accident. You'll that's, confront it. Yes. Directly. I think that it has to be. What usually happens? I know it depends upon the other person. But Most you, of the time, I mean, I've never been in a situation where someone denied because clearly someone realizes that they're putting someone else's life and their own at risk, so they do put their phone down. But I'm, if that ever happens to anyone else, a teen especially, I would recommend having them pull over or have someone that loves you pick you up because honestly, if they really do care about you, they'll understand that you were in an uncomfortable situation. So that's situation. the advice right there. Yeah. It's, it's great advice and, and we want more teens to feel comfortable doing that. They need to speak up because they have the right to speak number, uh, number one and number two, you need to say to your friend, I care about you as much as I care about me. So please put it down. Please yeah. slow down. A buckle lot of up. Times whatever. The benefit yeah. of doing the program in the school because you're reaching. I'm sorry for driving. Put up the You Got Brains website if we could. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The benefit to doing the program in the school is that you're reaching your students and your peers, and so oftentimes they've heard the same message. And so a lot of our messages focus on giving power to the passenger. And so somebody like Nolan can turn around. Say it again. Power. Power to the passenger to okay. speak up and advocate for themselves. And so somebody, if that was a fellow Manalapan student, Nolan can turn around and say, hey, come on, you, you saw the work we did last year. Let, let, let's not make a mistake. And you know, the, the Manalapan High School and many of our other high schools, it goes beyond the video. It's not just the creation of a video, it's the in-school campaign. It's the students getting involved in helping to educate the parents about the dangers of distracted driving as well, which is done at Manalapan High School. But it's really a grassroots campaign with the video being a part of it. And so that is our goal, that not only does Nolan and the Save a Brave group sort of get the message, but that they're able to spread that message so that when he's faced with situations, the driver will say, oh, you're right, man. I'll put it down. You're right. It's, you know, I'm going to make a good Let's decision. Let's put things in perspective. Uh, while NJM awarded, uh, gave this very terrific uh, simulator mm -hmm. to the winners, how many schools participated? Well, um, last year we had 58. Hmm. This year we're moving forward with 59. Wow. And the benefit of the simulator in the schools has been a huge asset because as why? we started, Absolutely. the reason why teens are crashing is due to their inexperience. And so the driving simulators are allowing students to gain experience in a safe, structured environment. Without actually being on the road. Without actually being on the road. Now, it doesn't take, a, it doesn't substitute practice driving, but it certainly can enhance the practice driving that is done. And through the generosity of New Jersey manufacturers, they've been able to deliver these driving simulators, which most schools do not have the budget for, mm. to over um, probably yeah. about 60 schools at this point. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so we're just so fortunate in New Jersey to be able to 
partner as a nonprofit organization in the Brain Injury Alliance of New Jersey with New Jersey manufacturers and other sponsors, including the New Jersey Teen Safe Driving Coalition, to be able to bring these programs to the high schools right. and then also to leave a lasting impact of a driving simulator into the schools. So we're thrilled. Let me just say this. Um, first of all, the half hour has gone by too quickly, but more importantly, on behalf of everyone in the public broadcasting world, I want to thank all of you for doing a tremendous public service, um, for being so supportive from a corporate point of view, from doing everything you're doing, but particularly to you. Mm -hmm. You've had a powerful impact on a lot of young people. You should be very proud thank of yourself. You. Keep it up. I appreciate that. Yes. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, N13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by New Jersey Council of County Colleges, MD Advantage, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Cohn Resnick, the Russell Berry Foundation, and by Steve and Elaine Pozicki. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. For 17 years, the Russell Berry Foundation has recognized unsung heroes in New Jersey who have done extraordinary things for others. If you know a New Jersey resident whose selfless or heroic actions make them worthy of recognition, you can nominate them to receive the Russell Berry Making a Difference Award. With annual cash prizes of up to $50,000, this award can make a significant difference for a very deserving person. Nominations are accepted online.